RealAgriculture.com presents The Dairy School. You can find more great dairy content at dairyschool.ca. Bernard Tobin here, Real Agriculture, on The Dairy School today. And hey, we're joined today by uh, Dale Martin of uh, Margrove Holsteins and Aaron Stefanis, uh, market agronomist, Pride Seeds. And we're going to talk a little bit about alfalfa, low lignin alfalfa, right? And uh, I guess I want to get some some thoughts from you on how to grow this stuff you know where a guy like Dale is going to be able to use this and and uh, you know where it fits well the thing about low lignin alfalfa is it's got a real neat component on its digestibility side so um, like Dale said if you're moving to like a hundred percent ration and you're looking to you know kind of increase that availability of protein in that ration that's that's where the low lignin really has a, has a great fit so um, Dale, in a previous conversation Dale had mentioned that that uh, you know, there's, there's lots of protein in that alfalfa plant, but unless it's digestible, it's just essentially going straight through the cow and the cow's not taking advantage of it. Where now with this low, the low lignin, having more digestibility, there is more available to the cow, so you are getting more protein in that ration. Well, tell me about, I mean, like, obviously, now this is the first year for low lignin mm -hmm. alfalfa That's commercialized right. in uh, Ontario and Canada, and we're standing in a pretty nice field yeah. of low lignin. Tell me about what you're seeing here, uh, growing here, and uh, from an agronomic perspective. Well, the one thing I see here, and even when I take customers in here at, uh, we had a day, day here at Dale's and take customers back here, is they're really impressed with the stand. The stand is actually phenomenal. And, and a big part of that is a high seeding rate. We've always, alfalfa is, you know, in the long run, the first year fairly expensive to plant. And so uh, people usually uh, back off on, uh, on their planting, uh, on their, their seeding rates because to save a little bit of money. But Time and time again in, uh, in, the, in my career as an agronomist, I've seen that actually keeping that seeding rate at least to that 20 pounds per acre is, uh, is where you want to be because that thicker stand just makes it more lush. You have less, less um, spots in the field and uh, the alfalfa just seems to do better on those higher that higher planting seeding rate. Awesome. Now, the, you've, this is your first field of low lignin. Mm -hmm. um, dry here this year, but you said you're really pleased with it. Tell us about what you've seen. Um, three cuts, for example, and uh, the quality. Well, that was the one of the things that really intrigued me is uh, being able to go back to three cuts and maintaining a high quality um, alfalfa and um, possibly even increasing our yield. Mm. So it's a win-win on that. And uh, what we're seeing in the, uh, with the cows is, um, I realize we only have one year feeding of it, but the cows, we've seen a higher protein milk component on mm. the cows. And uh, so if that, that would be another huge benefit if, that, if we see that in coming years. Yeah, and you were talking about digestibility and, and you know, feed intake. I mean, if you can get that higher number of protein uh, prior into a cow with less volume, I mean, that's just got to make your ration that much more powerful. Exactly. If this, if the, uh, if it feeds like we're hoping it, it will, every pound of intake she's eating is more digestible. So there's more milk mm. and more nutrients there. So right. it's a, it's a win for the cow and it's, it should also result in milk production. Yeah. We were talking before we went on camera and you were saying that you really noticed one significant management difference with low lignin. Yeah, one of the key components when you're establishing a crop is to uh, to at least go 20 pounds or more. You may think it's too expensive and pull back on your uh, seeding rate to 15 pounds, but then I believe you're going to be distorting the benef the full benefit of uh, the low lignin because the denser you can get the crop, the less branching of the alfalfa you'll have and uh, a more digestible crop to feed the cows. Final thoughts from you on, you know, where this crop will go next year and the years ahead? Well, and that's the way, I kind of want to, you know, look at the summary of some of the stuff we talked about. <clears throat> we talked about feeding a little bit less, we talked about yield, and we talked about, uh, you know, protein levels. The one thing that's also good that we didn't talk about with the low lignin alfalfa is uh, is the ability to kind of push it a little bit longer. So as you let your, your uh, alfalfa mature a little bit longer, you're getting more biomass, which means more yield. The thing with conventional alfalfa previously is as soon as you start to get <clears throat> closer and closer to that flowering date, um, you got a more woody, tougher, not as digestible um, um, alfalfa product, which isn't as nice to feed. <clears throat> but now, 
with the low lignin, we can push that a little bit longer, take it to a 10% bloom, which means more yield, and we keep the uh, the NDFD, so the digestibility of it, fairly stable across. So we're getting a little bit more yield out of it, and that's where uh, Dale had mentioned, we can get, get away with three cuts yep. instead of, of four. And that also means more longevity of the field because you can actually push your crop to say four years instead yeah. of three. So, so a little you're getting more a little bit more, more out of it. Um, <clears throat> so I think there's a lot of wins all around. Um, and at the end of the day, it's all about putting more milk and more milk uh, into the tank with you know maybe less feed or maybe f more feed from on farm, which is mm -hmm. very important to profitability.